Hi, welcome to the next installment in our video tutorial series here for the IDF to PH uh, toolkit. Um, if you've been following along, um, you uh, uh, hopefully are up to the point where you've got a, a functioning connection to Excel or you're, you're creating your Honeybee Zone and um, a, a, a functioning Energy Plus model and, and converting that over to a, a PHPP. Um, and so far, we have been working entirely in uh, the opaque or, or with the opaque envelope services. In this next set of videos, what I'd like to do is start to add some some detail. And in particular, we want to start to add some windows to the project. So windows obviously are going to be really challenging. There's a lot to say about windows. Um, there's a lot of complexity around windows, both with the geometry and the, uh, in particular, the material assignments. Uh, and the way that Energy Plus and PHPP deal with Windows, PHPP deal with Windows, uh, is also very different. Um, they, they sort of approach the question of window performance um, quite differently. So, um, you know, we'll look at a, a couple of places where the where they diverge, where they're, where they're different than one another, and we'll, we'll look at how the IDF to PH tools here allow us to um, sort of manage window information and, and um, how we can control all the window parameters, window information, and, and we'll look at how we can review the, the impact of windows on our overall building building performance um, uh, as well. So let's let's start by taking a look at our PHPP and just sort of reviewing where we're at with our PHPP <clears throat> and um, uh, uh, see, how, see how things stand before we add any windows. So I have my PHPP Excel model here. Um, this is the uh, active Excel model that I've been streaming all of my content to. So all of these blue cells are things which are um, uh, written from Grasshopper. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking information or data from Rhino and Grasshopper and pumping it through into this um, uh, active PHPP document here. So we're already setting an awful lot of uh, information here. Go to the areas worksheet and you can see we're, we're setting a lot of information about our different uh, wall surfaces, uh, uh, assemblies, construction types, etc. But one thing that we haven't input, one thing that we haven't added at all, are any windows to the project. So if I go to the Windows worksheet down here, you'll see that my Windows worksheet is, is totally blank. So I, I don't have any active windows in, in the project right now. Um, and so we want to start to add some of those windows. Um, if we uh, scroll across a little bit and we just go to our heating worksheet, so I'm going to go to the, the main heating worksheet. Um, remember, this is a, just a review and a, a sort of a visualization worksheet. We don't actually input any information here, um, but you can notice here on line 21 that um, the window area is zero. So we don't, we don't have any windows active in the project, and so they're not part of our, our overall annual heat losses. Uh, and then if we scroll down a little ways, uh, to our um, our solar gains panel here. Notice that we get all zeros uh, except for the opaque areas. Uh, you know the opaque areas will see some small amount of solar gain uh, as they heat up due to solar radiation throughout the year. So so the only solar gain in our project right now is through the opaque surfaces of the building. Um, so obviously not very much. So we're we're um, we're going to see a lot more solar gain when we start adding our, our windows into the mix here, um, uh, uh, for sure. So if we if we sort of come down to the bottom here to our, our little summary graph that shows our annual energy performance in terms of kilowatt hours per square meter per year, you can see on the left we get our losses, on the right we get our gains. And notice, um, compared to the losses, our uh, solar gain is, is, is quite modest, is quite, quite minimal. So, you know, not a lot of solar gain right now, it stands to reason there's no windows in the project. No windows, no doors. So far we just have an opaque box that we have been modeling. So let's start to add some windows to the project here and um, see how we would, would do that. So we go back to the windows and let me uh, shrink this back down. So there's all sorts of ways that we can add windows to our project here. Um, um, the way that we're going to demonstrate um, is very similar to the way that we built out our opaque surfaces. We're going we're gonna to piggyback on top of, we're going to utilize those existing honeybee components as much as possible. So before we start building our PHPP windows, what I'd like to do is, is talk about modeling and entering in some Honeybee windows. We'll look at how the IDF manages those windows and window parameters, and then we'll um, come back and start to talk about how we manage them uh, specifically for PHPP or, or passive house projects. So let's start by talking about how we would add some windows to this if it was just a, a, a normal Energy Plus um, Honeybee project. 
So you can see my grasshopper definition on the right here. I'm building my honeybee zone on the left. Then I'm adding some interior rooms. Then we're exporting it to Energy Plus. We're reading that IDF back in, converting it to PHPP. We do some setup on the PHPP, set some, some options, and then export back to the, the Excel. So that, that streams out to Excel. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some windows before we export to the Energy Plus uh, simulation. So I, I want my windows to flow through into the IDF and into my PHPP because I, I want that IDF, I want my Energy Plus simulation to match my PDF, my PHPP. I want, I want both, of those, um, both of those models to match one another. So I, so I want all my windows to be over on the left-hand side of that export to Energy Plus um, component. So I'm actually going to put them in before the interior rooms as well. I'm going to sort of keep all my envelope related elements uh, in the in the first bit of this definition. So the sort of left hand side of this definition. So I'm going to make us I'm going to make us a little more room here. So let's make some room for for adding some windows. And let's um, give ourselves a little divider here. So let's add another divider. Um, again, just to sort of keep things tidy. And let's, uh, let's name this. So we'll call this add windows. So we'll make a whole new section here, if I can type, uh, we'll make a whole new section here where we're going to add some windows into the mix. All right, so how would we normally add windows to a Honeybee project? So if I have, zoom in here, if I have my basic Honeybee zone, so I can take a look at the output here, the output is just a, a closed boundary representation, so I have my, my geometry coming out. This is my Honeybee zone. So if I was going to add to, to this, if I was going to add geometry, normally the way we would do that would be with the typical Honeybee tools, and maybe we would come up here, and if it's early schematic, maybe we would, um, maybe we would, you know, do a glazing based on ratio sort of thing. Um, but for the most part, uh, we like to draw things in, in Rhino um, and, and to work that way, for, for the most part, not always, but most part. And um, so we're going to use this add HB glazing component. So the add HB glazing component is going to allow us to take some surface drawn in Rhino and add it to our honeybee zone. So I'm going to use this guy. I'm going to grab this component and drop this onto the uh, canvas here. Now, the way that this works, let me sort of reposition here. The way that this works is that we're going to take in the honeybee zone object. Then we're going to take in some child surfaces, one or, one or more. We're going to take in some optional child surface names and then some optional child surface constructions. So we have to input at least the zone and some surfaces that will represent our windows. And then as output, we get the modified honeybee zone. So we get the modified honeybee zone here as the, as the output. And we're going to then pass that along to our IDF, our IDF file. So OK, so first of all, let's take our honeybee zone. And I'm going to connect up the honeybee zone to the honeybee zone. So I'm going to pass the honeybee zone from my creator, my zone creator, which is combining all the opaque surfaces. I'm going to pass it over to this add glazing. Now what we need to input next are some glazing surfaces. So notice here um, uh, that you're not going to get any output. You're not going to get anything resulting from this component until you add some surfaces in, until you add some windows into the mix here. So we need to have at least one window for this thing to for this thing to operate. Let me delete this panel here. So we need to add some windows in somehow or another. So I could come over here and I could uh, just start drawing in, but I do need to be cautious about that because I'm using a pipeline and the pipeline is connected. Let me reposition my elements here a little bit to clean up. My pipeline is connected to one of my layers, and so I need to be careful about what layer I'm drawing on because remember, if I zoom out and scroll over my pipeline here is pulling everything from the default layer. So I have to be careful not to draw my windows on the default layer. Instead, I'm, I'm going to uh, add a new layer called Windows. I'll set that as the active layer. Let me clean up my uh, layer set here a little bit. So I'm on a new layer called Windows. That's the active layer. So I'm not going to draw on this default layer. I could probably make this all a little cleaner too. Let me just call this, um, or maybe not geometry, maybe call this opaque, opaque, uh, I don't know, envelope, opaque envelope. Sure, let's do it that way. Now this is all going to break until I reset this. So I have to reset my pipeline now to make sure everything comes through. So um, this is unhappy with me at the moment because it's trying to sort of grab a bunch of stuff. I should have locked this before I um, 
before I made that change. Uh, it's fine though. We can pull this through, and there we go. And now this should all update again. So this will all come back to life now, now that it's able to pull that data out. Um, so we'll give it a second there to, to update, and then we'll um, and then we'll continue on. Okay, so everything's back. We are uh, back operational now. Everything is flowing through. I'm getting my yep, I'm getting my zone out the backside there. And let's see, I'm going to set myself to the Windows layer, and let's use another pipeline. Let's use another pipeline to bring the geometry for our windows in. So I'm going to double click and type pipeline. So here's my pipeline, and let's filter for the Windows layer, and let's get the geometry. So currently, I'm getting nothing, because I don't have anything drawn on this layer. So let me just draw very quickly at least one surface, so that we have something to work with. So here's our window surface. It's crazy long, crazy big, but we need just at least one window surface to work with. Now you can draw your window surfaces however you like. You can draw them as curves, draw them as surfaces, draw them, you know, whatever. In some way or another, we're going to get that surface in. So I'm using a pipeline here. I could I could just as easily use a regular B, uh, a B rep reference. I could say, you know, set one B rep. So that would be fine as well. In either, in any event, I'm going to take this geometry and I'm going to connect it up to the child surface. So I'm now passing in the child surface into my Honeybee Zone Builder. And notice now I'm getting a closed beer up out the backside. So I can now take this output and pass it along to the next component in the chain. And of course, all I need to do is update that one link. Uh, everything else stays linked ever afterwards. So I've now added some windows to this project. Let me clean up a little bit here. So I've added some windows to this project. Those are now flowing through into our IDF file. So let's take a look at that IDF file. Let's see what happened when we added that glass to our IDF file. So let me pull up my file viewer here. And remember, the IDF file is, for our in our example here, is getting saved to IDF to PH example. And it's in the PHPP folder, or excuse me, it's in the Energy Plus folder. I'll go through, Open Studio, E Plus, Model to IDF, and there's that IDF. So there's our IDF. And let's open that with EP Launch. So let's just take a look at what we got in that Energy Plus file. So what did we get when we, when we built this? Okay, so here's our EP launch, and remember from our first uh, videos, I can go into this edit IDF editor at any point to take a look at, uh, at the contents of my Energy Plus model. So I'll come in here, I'll go into this, I'll press Control L to filter for just the, the uh, operational, Control L to filter for just the operational or just the used elements. And now if I scroll down, just as before, we have all our building surfaces. So remember, we saw our building surfaces, roof, wall, floor, vertex information, construction information. We have all our materials, just like before. But notice now we have some building surfaces or some fenestration surfaces. So fenestration surfaces is windows, obviously. So here's our um, window with a big, ugly name. We'll, 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 we'll fix that. It's a surface type of window. It's got a construction type of exterior window. Where did that come from? Well, we'll, we'll look at that as a, a building surface name. So what building surface is it hosted in? And then just like any other surface, it's got a bunch of vertex information down below that describes the boundaries of the rectangular window. So we added a window to the IDF. So there's a, there is now a window in the IDF, and it has been applied. It is of a certain size has a geometry, and it has a construction type applied. So every surface, whether it's an opaque surface or a window, gets a construction applied to it. So let's take a look at this construction, this exterior wall, or excuse me, exterior window construction. So if we go to our constructions and we take a look at exterior window, you'll notice that this is actually a built-up window made of glass, an air gap, and glass. So this is a double pane window with a 13 millimeter air gap in between. So there's a couple different ways that we can build windows. This is a, a built up window assembly. And this is, uh, this is deployed or this is um, assigned to windows by default 
unless we specify otherwise. So anytime we build a window, if we do not explicitly say use this assembly or use this construction type, this is what it, this is what Honeybee is going to assign to that window for us. Now, is this a good assembly? What is our like, is this any good? What's the U value for this assembly? Well, we 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 can't really tell in this buildup. So so the, we can't actually see that in our IDF to pH viewer here. Um, we we would actually have to calculate that value. So let's do that. Let's take a look at what type of let's take a look at what type of assembly we um, uh, uh, have here, and we'll do that using our, our typical Honeybee tools. Um, so again, we can use our decompose EP construction. Um, we can use our decompose EP, constru EP construction. I need to sort of get the name of that window construction, and again, there's a couple ways I can do that. I could come in here and I could say, uh, you know, label the zones and surfaces, um, and get me the um, uh, show me the da, 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 where's my attribute list attribute list show me the energy plus constructions oops and let's see here's my list of all the constructions which are being used in the project uh, and these are the only the opaque assemblies so where's my window well with the way that this guy works is we have to I think we have to say uh, it's a boolean yes yeah so we have to um, we have to say, oh, show me the windows. Don't show me the opaque assemblies, show me the windows. So we set windows to true in this case. So there's my assembly, so exterior window, or excuse me, that's my construction. So let's pass that into the construction name. And now let's take a look. So we have our materials. There's our buildup, three millimeter glass, 13 millimeter air gap, three millimeter glass, and let's see what kind of calculated U value we get for this assembly, uh, 2.4. That is not a good window. That is, that is a bad window. Uh, so that's fine, it's a default window, right? This is a default window. That's what gets assigned in the absence of any other information. So we're going to need to assign a better glazing spec to this project, a, a better window spec to this project. But we are getting something right out of the box, so that's great. So let's go ahead, we can delete this now. So just this one component adds the window, adds the default, compo uh, default construction, and pushes it through to our IDF file. And because it's pushed through to the IDF file, it's going to show up inside of our PHPP as well. So let's go back to our PHPP now. And notice that we have a window that showed up in our Windows worksheet. So we have one window. Uh, it says that it's on the south face. It's got a size. It's ridiculously big, 18 meters wide by a meter and a half tall. Uh, it's installed in wall two, and it has a glazing type of exterior window and a frame type of exterior window. And notice it has a glazing u-value of 2.4 and a frame u-value of 2.4. So this is one of those places where the PHPP and the IDF are just going to work very differently than one another. The IDF, the Energy Plus simulation, is going to apply a single U value to the entire window by default. So the way that the Honeybee works out of the box is that it's going to apply that single U value to the entire window assembly. So we're going to have a single UW for the whole window. And it's not going to change window to window. It's going to be the same for, for, for every window in the project um, or, or every window that it's assigned to, um, provided uh, uh, that you assign the same, the same uh, construction. So it's not going to change based on size. And that's very different than the PHPP. The PHPP, of course, asks us to input um, a glazing U value and a frame U value. Uh, and then it's going to combine those for each window in the project and calculate a UW for every single window in the project uniquely. So a very different method, a very different way of approaching the question of um, heat loss of windows. The PHPP method um, uh, going to be um, very, very detailed, require a lot of um, detailed input, a lot of information, a lot of parameters to be input. The, um, the Energy Plus uh, uh, protocol, the, the default protocol at least, um, much, much simpler. Um, it's going to require a lot less parameters um, right out of the box, and it's going to apply that same UW. Uh, to, to, to all windows that it's assigned to, regardless of size. Um, and it's going to apply it to the frame and the glass at the same time. 
So very different ways of, of dealing with these things. And we'll, we'll, we'll sort of see how we can sort of manage that and get the right information for our PHPP into the PHPP, how we can get the right information for Energy Plus into Energy Plus. So they're going to require different, different amounts of information, different types of information in different places. Um, and we'll obviously uh, want to manage that. But we do have an active window, so let's go to our uh, heating worksheet now and take a look at how that changed our heating worksheet. Notice right out of the gate, our solar gain increased significantly. We used to be at, I don't, what were we at, four, five, something like four kilowatt hours per square meter per year. So now we're at 19, 19 and a half. Um, if we scroll up a little bit and go to our uh, heat gains section, notice we still have all of the um, opaque gains, but we now have a lot of south-facing solar gain as well. So we're getting a lot of solar gain from the windows, and if we go up to the top, now that we now that we have some windows in the project, notice we also are subject to heat losses through those windows, and the heat losses in this case are quite substantial. So we have a bad U-value. The heat losses per year, about 4,800 kilowatt hours per year. Um, compare that to the heat gain, about 4,400 kilowatt hours per year. So um, uh, because the windows are such poor performers, we're actually losing more energy over the course of a year than we're gaining through that south-facing window there. So um, uh, it's not helping us. It's, in fact, uh, penalizing us or, or hurting us when it comes to the overall uh, heating performance of the building. So we'll, in, in, in future videos, we'll look at how we can modify that. We'll look at how we can adjust all these parameters and gain some control over the specifications that we're um, inputting here for our, our windows. Um, but um, this, one's gone, this video has gone on for a, a little while now, so I think I'm going to cut this one off here. But um, I will uh, look forward to um, seeing you back in the next one where we'll, we'll, we'll continue on with our discussion of windows. We'll, we'll take a closer look at window specifications, and we'll, we'll look at how we can uh, manage those and adjust those.